Hello, my name is Yanni Caldas, and I wanted to create a short video on how I created a procedural impact system using Unreal and Wise. The purpose of this system is so that a single prop can be reused multiple times throughout a level, and if that prop has physics attached to it, it can use various RTPC controls so that Wise can change the impact sound based on those parameters. This way, if a prop were to collide with another prop and then roll on the ground a few times, it would play a unique impact sound for each of those collisions. This being a gameplay controlled system would allow for more immersion to the player, while also keeping the audio system very dynamic and fluid. For example, my test level, I have these boxes. And I wanted to create a system so that whenever the box collides with any object, it would play an impact sound. That same sound changes based on the velocity of the box, the mass of the box, if the box has moved more than a user-defined distance, or even the velocity of the collided actor. Now looking at the blueprint, the whole system gets triggered off of the on component hit event. This physics-based collision will trigger whenever the hitbox of the object collides with another. From here, we have a custom event I created that is essentially a callback that checks if the sound is currently playing. This is the first area where we control the number of times the audio event gets triggered to prevent events going through the logic only for Wise to use its own voice calling to stop the event from playing. Coming out of the false output since sound is currently not playing, we then change the state of that same variable to true so new events don't go through the logic until the variable has been set back to false, which happens at the very end. After this, we start to set up a few variables that we can reuse later in the blueprint to keep things looking clean instead of long spaghetti looking strings. Some of these variables are the location of the prop impact, the location of where the prop was displaced in the event that it moved, the velocity of the prop, the velocity of the collided prop, or even if the prop has moved more than a defined distance. This can then be used later to trigger more of a scuff sound instead of a hard hit to give extra realism to the collision. If the prop, for example, was to slide across the floor after the collision. After creating all those variables, we get to a segment to control the number of calls that can happen to prevent multiple sounds from playing too quickly back to back, so that the sound sounds more natural. The initial branch is opened if either of the following three conditions are true. If the collided actor velocity is over 100 game units, if the prop's velocity is moving above a defined threshold, or if the prop has moved more than a defined distance. The reason for either of these things being triggered allows for different gameplay moments to trigger an impact sound even after the initial collision is over. For example, if in our game we had a car and that car then collides with a brick wall, based on how fast the car collided with the wall, we can get anything from a light crumble to a large impact of bricks falling, or even no sound if there was a light tap. If that same wall was to have a brick fall off after the collision, it should make a sound. And after the brick rolls or slides across the ground, we should hear a sound for each of those moments until the movements become small enough that we don't trigger the sound anymore. Using user-defined variables for this allows for any of these components to be tuned specifically to the game being created to best suit the end goal. After this branch, we have a sequence that goes into a do once node. This do once is reset if the prop has moved by at least a defined amount. This is to prevent a brick from the last example bouncing quickly in the same spot without moving. This is another small element that controls how frequently a sound can be played. A nice bonus with a setup like this is that the frequency of the impact sound is entirely gameplay dependent instead of using an arbitrary timer or using a static collision sound, which allows for something that's a little bit more dynamic and immersive as I mentioned before. After the flow control, we get to how this blueprint begins to integrate with WISE. Using the variables that we defined at the beginning, we can drive multiple RTPCs to get a more dynamic sound. These RTPCs include the prop weight, the prop velocity, the collided actor impact velocity, and if the prop has moved more than a defined amount. The prop weight gets used so that if a level designer wanted to reuse a prop but change its size, it can use the same blueprint system and an RTPC can easily control a switch container within WISE to change from a heavier sound to a lighter one, or even pitch the sound a little bit to give a little bit more variety to the prop. The prop velocity gets used to modulate the pitch of a sound. So that way, if a prop was to move fast and start to slow down as it's perhaps rolling, the pitch could slowly decrease alongside the volume to emulate audibly the prop slowing down. The collided actor impact velocity can be used to change the character of the impact. Using the same wall and car collision example from earlier, we could change the impact sound from being a hard bang to more of a light crumble of dust. 
Finally, we have if the prop has moved by a defined amount. This can be used so that after the initial impact, we could switch the sound so that plays more of a scuff instead of a direct impact. At the end of all this, we have the audio event posted at the prop location. After playing the sound, we tell the custom event I created that a sound is no longer playing to open the gate back up that is at the beginning of the blueprint. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you either learned something new or inspired by this setup to do something similar in your own projects. If you have any ways that can further improve this setup, I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.